education has caused us to adopt the very lexicon that Al-Qaeda and its affiliates would prefer we use in order to further their aims and objectives. Whoever controls the war of words influences the outcome of the battle of ideas and the battle of hearts and minds. To change hearts and minds and encourage moderation, we must challenge ideas with ideas. Diversity, tolerance, and openness to different cultures and faiths define our societies. We must remain faithful to those values. <coughs> and this can be challenging. Some months ago, John Brennan, assistant, John Brennan, assistant to the President Obama for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, spoke at New York University, where he was hosted by the university's Islamic Center and the Islamic Law Students Association. The audience included people of many faiths, Muslim, Christian, Jew, Hindu, and Sikh. He was there to have a dialogue on how Americans could work together to keep the United States safe from the terrorists who seek to drive us apart. After he finished speaking, person after person stood up to share their perspective and to ask their questions. Mothers and fathers, religious leaders and students, both recent immigrants and American citizens by birth. One after another, they spoke of how they loved America and of all the opportunities that it afforded them and their families. But they also spoke of their concerns, that their fellow Americans, and at times their own government, sometimes seemed to see them as a threat rather than a part of the American family. One father explained that his 21-year-old son, an American born and raised who was subjected to extra security every time he boards a plane, now feels disenfranchised in his own country. It is at this point that it is important to understand the radicalization process. How does an individual become a radical extremist? And how does an extremist then become a terrorist? What would happen if this young man, this particular young man, met a friend or mentor who talked to him about membership in a group that gave credence to his feelings of disenfranchisement, or if he found information about such a group on the internet? Might he start to identify with that ideology and perhaps decide to take action to support the cause? The evolution from extremism to terrorism can take place anywhere, from academic settings, mosques and community centers, to the internet. Increasingly, Mainstream Muslim leaders are challenging the extremist message of hatred and violence. The ra radical radicalization cycle can only be broken if we stand together against terrorism. Working together with Muslim communities is therefore, I believe, one of the most promising and vital avenues for deterring radicalization of young people. This year, the commemoration of September 11th follows a very vocal and concerned debate in the United States in which opposition to a planned Islamic community center near the World, Tra World Trade Center site escalated into a national discussion over Islam, extremism, and religious freedom. The anniversary of September 11th has always been in these nine years challenging for the Muslim community. This year, 9-11 happens to coincide almost exactly with the end of Ramadan and with the start of the Jewish New Year. It is rare for those two celebrations to coincide. They are different faiths and they follow different rituals, but both of these celebrations represent similar periods of devotion and contemplation. In fact, my wife and I last night were honored to host an iftar fast-breaking reception for about 100 folks in our home in Berlin. And quite notably, and quite deliberately, while the overwhelming representation 
for, for members of the Muslim faith. Two comments. One, it was a diversity within the Muslim faith. We throw this phrase around as a general statement, but we all know that there are various communities within communities. And secondly, and as important and not more importantly, we had a handful of the most important and senior leaders of the Jewish community in Berlin and in Germany with us, and of the Christian community. And the reality is, the more we walk in each other's shoes, the more we respect each other, the higher the rates of tolerance go up, the better, the better the world is for our respective children and grandchildren. This year, hopefully, the, the debate that has been so vocal in the United States will, in the end, inspire people to come together, united not only in grief and remembrance, but also in the resolve to stand together. This was the greatest lesson of September 11, 2001, and the strongest rebuke to those who attacked us then, and also the attacks that have taken place since, in London, in Madrid, in Bali, and elsewhere. It is important that we not look back in anger or look forward in fear. It is important that we look around in awareness of the dangers we face, but also of the strength of our citizens, our communities, and our resolve. Conferences such as this one are ideal opportunities to foster that sense of awareness. And again, I commend you 